you guys, it's Katie. Hi, how's it going? How's life? I can blow bubbles in my water, look. <laughs> Did you guys ever have that thing when you were a kid and you would blow bubbles in your milk at restaurants or whatever and like your parents would yell at you but you would still do it anyway because that's the rebellious child that you were? Today I want to talk about something I haven't actually ever talked about on my channel before so this is exciting. Um, but today I want to talk about Christian romance novels. So I don't know about you but I know that when I was like 11 through 15 Christian romance novels are pretty much the only books I read. And if you don't know what a Christian romance novel is, I can almost guarantee you it's gonna be set anywhere from 1700 through like 1920. They're either gonna be in Texas, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or somewhere in Britain. And it's gonna be a really typical guy meets girl, but they don't get along, but then they fall in love, and then woohoo, they get married. And when I said that I read a lot of these things growing up, like, let me, let me just show you, okay? when I was like 13 years old, I would just soak up every single word. But when I got older and looked back at all this stuff, I realized some things that I feel like are worth being pointed out right now. And number one is this. These books are appallingly unrealistic. I swear when I was 13 years old, all of my self-confidence issues came from reading these books because in every single one, the main character is this girl who's sweet and charming and funny and bubbly and strong but demure and witty and adventurous with perfect complexion and long flowy curly hair. Like, oh my gosh, I used to try to live up to that. And not to mention the fact that all the guys in these books are always these like strong buff farmer guys who just, they're just gruff and they just need a woman to come in and love them and bring out their soft side. We should not hold ourselves up to that standard and we definitely should not hold guys up to that standard. Alright, the second thing, which in my opinion is really the most important thing, is that these books borderline on inappropriate. I mean, obviously we're not talking Fifty Shades of Grey level here, but what scares me most is that these books are marketed to like 12 year old girls and you would not believe some of the things that are in these books. You know what, I'm just, I'm just gonna read you a section, okay? Okay, just to set the scene here, the girl is like a cook for this guy and he's just coming after a day's work in the lumber field and he's now washing up after, after he's worked all day. Her gaze moved from his face to his neck, to his shoulders, to his chest. Oh my, she whispered. She looked at him, her expression completely befuddled. She could not dispel the image of him washing with such such gusto! The byplay of his muscles on his back as he scrubbed his arms was a work of art in motion. When he had turned around, she could not believe the sheer breadth of him. She didn't even know men had muscles in all those places. Why, she wasn't even sure she'd be able to span the width of his arm with both hands together. I just, oh, I'm so like, oh my gosh. I don't think I need to say any more on that point. Like, they're all like that. It's pathetic. <laughs> Alright, my third point, which is more of a question than a point, but what's with the whole romanticizing of the Amish lifestyle? Do you know how many Amish Christian romance novels there are? Like, a lot. <laughs> I never enjoyed those ones. I just sounded a little bit strange, so I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. And my fourth point is, and I'm not a feminist by any means, but these books really put women down. The girls in these books are always raised to make food and keep home and give their husband babies. Like, it literally seems as if, like, once they get married, their life stops and they just become, like, a slave for their husband. There's so many things wrong with that, in my opinion, and I just don't think that you should be telling girls when they're 13 years old that all they're gonna add up to in life is, you know, making food for a man to keep him happy. The whole thing saddens me. I guess in conclusion, if you are gonna read these books, just do it with a clear mind and don't hold yourself up to those standards, don't hold guys up to those standards, don't take them in any way realistically and just enjoy the love story but just leave it there. Although if you really want a love story, just read any Jane Austen novel or the Anna Green Gables series or something like that because they're so much better. 
So that's all I have for today. I'm sorry if you've never heard about Christian romance novels before today and I just ruined it for you before you ever read them. Although, I'm not really sorry because, like, you're welcome. I just saved you a ton of stupid wasted time that I had when I was 13. <laughs> Thanks as always for watching, guys. Until next time I see you, have a great life. Don't be stupid or make bad decisions. <laughs> Bye, guys. The way he chafed his chest as if it were a washboard so fascinated her she could only stare. And the dark blonde hair at the pits of his arms.